So, like, yeah, Chris Stuckman, not someone we've actually covered before, we've only mentioned him in passing. He's a YouTuber, lots of critic, uh, critical analysis on movies. The kind that I am, uh, well, I don't know about rags, but you know, I'm very fucking aware of Chris Stuckman. We've seen a lot of videos mm -hmm. from him. You might be like, why? And it's like, well, I'm always, like, you know, keep a wide palette, always interested to see what everyone's saying, and uh, he's one of the, um, is he the most popular singular reviewer now? Yes, so, yeah, actually. It's interesting to yeah. keep track of him. And, th and then there's his review. <laughs> which, you know, well before I'd even started making my reviews, I remember watching his and being like, ugh, oh, you're not saying anything. The the sort of meme about it would just be to, you you sound relatively monotonous and half interested, and you start describing techniques in a vague way to do with films. And you've got a Chris Stuckman well, review. Well, the, the issue is that fundamentally, one, that it, they're not long enough, there's not enough time to Never really say anything. Yeah. But even then, you know, when you compare it to, like, Jeremy Johns, he's got a certain attitude that makes it more interesting to watch. Because he, he sounds like he's interested, and he's sort of like, yeah, um, you know, like, like, like he's more compelling to listen to. I'm not an advocate for the whole, like, bouncy, crazy, like, hey, everybody, welcome to my- But I want you to sound like you actually give a shit, obviously. Right. Um, and, um, there's a happy and, balance. And when you make a- when you make a four-minute review of the Haunting of Hill House, you know that's that's really setting a great example. For, that was like for how when I saw that, it. I was just like, oh, of course, of course, like really. Yeah, ten hours of content in four minutes. Yeah, uh, it's like think of a, a technique and you go, um, camera work, and you're like, all right, what can you say about camera work? It, it's uh, flowing, it's smooth, it's janky, it's jarring, it's poorly edited, it's clearly on a dolly, or it's there's so many over crane shots that are just meh. You just combine all of these things, throw them together, d add different adjectives, and, and just... Uh, when you're listening to some of his videos, you might at one point be like, shit, what film was he talking about? Like, I've completely forgotten, because it's just like stuff. And you might be like, well, hey, you know, He's uh, referring to actual things in the movie, and you'd be like, yeah, but they really ever the, the, you really have like the specific context, and a lot of the time you have to figure out what he's even talking about specifically, like what words are referring to what things, and I just find that there's not much to gain from Chris Stuckman reviews. There's, there's, uh, there's really an interchangeability to each of them, I think. What makes any one particular Chris Stuckman review different to the other ones. You kind of compare it to like uh, Red Letter Media, where each of their reviews is really unique and really interesting and in-depth. Yeah, and oftentimes and... it's not even because of the film they're covering. <laughs> it's like no, because... it's, it's, but, but it's like, you know, there, there's a value to each specific Red Letter Media critique or review or discussion. Whereas with his, it's just because he covers everything and there's just no way that you can be... Which I think is part of the problem, actually, yeah. It's like... You can't talk about every movie. No, you, well, I don't even think, I don't think anyone should, I don't think anybody should well, be I mean, that you spread way is, too um, thin to quote our hero Bilbo Baggins. Well, I mean, part of the issue is, if you're watching, you know, if you're like, so I watched this movie that I had zero interest in at all, it's like, we're probably not going to get that much out of you, whereas if you just focus specifically on, I don't know, science fiction or action movies or, you know, d just the ones that you were interested in, then you can get something out of that, I think. Yeah. Whereas if it's just everything, like, you know, if someone asked me, uh, what, what's the movie? The Last Christmas? If somebody's like, what do you think of that? I'm like, I don't know, man. Like, I don't want to watch that fucking movie. Like, <laughs> why would you ask me what I think of it? I don't know. If I watched it, I'd probably just say, yeah, I didn't like it. <laughs> you know, there's not much to get out of that. But that's what Chris Stockman does, because he watches every movie. Yeah, well, not every movie. He but, said before, you know, like, many. the Blade Runner thing, where it's like, I'll watch a movie. He knows it's a classic. Until he knows I everyone like loves it. it, so you had to watch yeah. it until he liked it. It's like, oh. <laughs> he's very much a critic's critic, if you will. He's he's just like, I am going well, to be the perception of what a critic is. Like, what you can't pull anything from it, really, you know? Like, if you went up to somebody and said, what are your favorite movies? Usually, you're going to get a sort of mix. You probably get some of the, you know, the, the obvious candidates, like uh, 12 Angry Men or something like that. You get the obvious candidates, and then you might get something, you know, really obscure that you haven't heard of before, and you'd be like, oh, that's interesting. Whereas with him, I feel like it would just be Citizen Kane, Lawrence of Arabia, 12 Angry Men, you know, like all of the movies that you're supposed to have on your list of favorite movies of all time. And it's not yeah, because because they're, they're great movies, but the thing is, it's like, if he picked all on the list of, you know, the movies that are the best, like The Godfather or something like that, you'd be like, oh, okay, you know, that's cool. It, like, you know, it's just, it's just boring. 
He has branched out into filmmaking, or he, uh, he has for a while now, and uh, he's made a short film recently that's made it, he's released it onto his YouTube channel, which is pretty neat. I like the idea of someone trying to, using what they've learned to make something. Like, there's nothing nothing inherently bad about that. That's pretty cool. Um, also, the fact that he released mm -hmm. it onto YouTube, that's also cool. He's not even charging. He's like, hey, check it out. This is my work. We were curious to check out his short film. I guess now that that's out of the way, we can watch Notes from Melanie. Oh yeah, that's what it's called. Notes from Melanie. It's a comedy slash drama short film. Do you want to do like a little, before we start, do you want to do like a little guessing game? How many times are we going to laugh? Laugh with or laugh at? Laugh with. All right. Well, this is supposed to be a comedy, right? So okay, it's okay. Going I'm going to go ahead and guess he's going to get... I'm going to be generous. I want to say three laughs. He's going to get three laughs out of me. I feel like he'll get a couple chuckles. I don't think he's going to get a laugh out of me. Oh, okay. In that case, three chuckles. Something that's audible. Let's put it this way. If he can get three chuckles out of me, I, he, he earns a star. So that's three, two, and two. So how about laughs? <laughs> I don't think he's going to get a laugh. I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't yeah, think so. I'm going to go zero as well. So we got zeros across the board. We'll see if he gets us a couple chuckles. Yeah, Maybe fucking submit my expectations, please do it. How many times will we be moved slash shocked? Ah, uh, uh, zero. I'm thinking... <laughs> oh, I'm thinking zero too. Yeah. I'm going to go with one. <laughs> I'm, right. I'm expecting it to be right. some form of a twist that makes me Let's go, oh, I'm okay. Sure. Let's see yeah. if Chris Duckman can break up that concrete heart of yours. Yes, yeah, so... All right. Anything else? He won't move <laughs> mine. I, I feel nothing. <laughs> Man, if, if Rang's laughs always shocked, this is going to be a breakthrough. Consider my expectations subverted. <laughs> I hate it. Dark Forest Pictures. I guess that's his... It's not that dark. I yeah, guess. it's pretty light. His production I company, I guess. Yeah. Is this in their house? It looks Amen. like a house, yeah. Uh, like we're allowed to pause, right? Yeah, I, think <laughs> so. I suppose. Um, yeah. This person looks like a cartoon character. Why the puppets lament? It's about how we're locked into the mechanisms of our lives. In a way, we're all puppets of our own destiny, right? So our lead hero is lamenting the fact that he doesn't want the job. You see? The, the the film seems to have treated him like a bit of an idiot already. I wasn't even convinced of that yet. I actually thought that yeah, pitch was, was the pitch was a little pretentious, sure, but it was yeah, but it wasn't something like crazy. It's it worthwhile to remember that somebody's pitch is not necessarily going to reflect how pretentious it's going to come across in the film. I think I think a lot of things could come across as pretentious, which aren't you know when you actually make a movie. Also, of it. the puppets lament. I don't know. That's not a bad name. It's That's not like okay. the, it's not the worst name ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unmarketable, the, all right. The problem, I yeah, guess, well, is that if your main theme is that uh, uh, humans are essentially puppets, maybe keep puppet out of the title, because it's like, well, yeah, it's really obvious. Yeah, puppet is a... I don't know if I... It, I think it would be tough to convince people, hey, you want to go see The Puppet's Lament? Yeah, yeah. It sounds more like a theater piece than a, a movie. It does, yeah, like a play. Oh, yeah. Um, but she's clearly... I, and she's being assisted by the editing and the soundtrack here that he's crazy. And to top it off, can you really look at me and tell me that you see a poster with the title The Puppet's Lament on it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's got one? He's got one? This better, movie cured my cancer. Better, better than, than Schindler's, Schindler's List. list. Okay. Those for rolling pins what something did for hammers. That's a Jaws reference. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I get that, yeah. Why is there a rolling pin? Okay. I think we're probably more interested in this premise than... Uh, we're at, we're not we're gonna get in terms of information, but all right, yeah, that's a yeah, maybe, sure. I mean, you know what's funny about uh talking about minimalist sort of posters? A bloodied rolling pin could really work, <laughs> yeah. depending it on could. like I don't know, like the maybe you could have a movie called The Baker, and it's the a Baker horror movie, uh, or, yeah, or, or, <laughs> or horror comedy. I could totally see a horror comedy thing going because you're like the idea there's yeah, a rolling pin with blood. Yeah, just call it the rolling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 and see, this is the thing. If it was self-aware, I'd be like, "Let's go see it. It could be funny." Assuming it's a good oh trailer. God, are as well. we gonna make each other laugh more than the comedy? <laughs> hey, well, you know what? This is this is less a reaction, more a review, an ongoing review. And if someone was like, "Hey, you can't review something before you've seen it," we're the only people out there who do an in-the-moment review, and we will we will make corrections if we're wrong. I guess. Before we roll along, I love the Jurassic Universe poster. Yeah, yeah that's that's. I, I like the Jurassic Universe poster. I think the. There's a good chance that's going to be a thing. <laughs> I would have yeah. said, though, this is definitely someone's room in their house, it seems like. 
I mean, well, I would have gone to an office. I think the I'm getting the impression, honestly, that that's supposed to be the point. Look, look at the. It I says guess. better than Schindler's List. This guy is gonna be out of his mind. I think. Yeah, he's he's being portrayed as crazy and out of it. Your story is about a taxi driving sociopath. Yeah, that's people. right. Taxi okay. Driving, yeah. <laughs> is this gonna? Is this short film just gonna be references to other films? Uh, uh... Rolling pen. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop you there. Taxi driver got four Oscar nominations. Melanie, why risk new when I can just build on what works? All right, all right. This is exactly why you're writing these these shitty knockoffs you've been writing for the past six years. I mean, look at these posters. Jurassic Universe. Yes. Uh, all right. right. I will say this is quite a tonal shift from her. Yeah, she's, uh, yeah, she's so gunning for the heart now. She's quite angry. Yeah, all of a sudden, yeah, like all of a sudden, you're like frustrated and angry. Like, do these uh, maybe these two have a history? But I feel like we missed out. Up. We kind of missed out on yeah. Like he he would have frustrated her a little bit more before she reached anger. <laughs> yeah, she's already saying yeah. like you're writing shitty movies. Like, oh wow! It's like go and ride for the jugular, man. But um, <laughs> also, I'm not sure how I feel about this yet. It depends on if we do something with this. But like, I yeah. liked Jurassic Universe being in the background. Now it's in the forefront. Yeah, it's. Yeah, I think it would be funny as like a Simpsons joke in the background that doesn't get overtly mentioned. You know, like how there's always little things in the Simpsons that are in the background that you can catch. Yeah. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. and it's like, oh, it's really cool. Um, but yeah, when you draw attention to it, it's like, oh. Like well, right. this is the thing. It, if they if they do something with this, and fair enough. But I I thought that the joke worked better without going Vroom, sort of thing. Yo. Here is the joke. Ah! 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 Oh my! Um, it's running past him. So at least uh, they've got the excuse that this guy is a bad filmmaker. So yeah. you know it makes sense that it looks like this. I guess. I feel like this isn't like far enough though i feel if you're gonna i feel like they should have gone further they could have done something with a prop you know like what i would have done with this instead of getting somebody to do a 3d render of a t-rex i would have like um i don't know you have like two characters who are normal people and then you shoot them and they're like oh fuck and then you have like maybe a toy t-rex that you're using as a puppet <laughs> I don't know, like and then you have it go like rawr and then like eating the people or something and i, I would like concede that's a possibility but like this this does the job though right or do you not think yeah, so it does the job i get it it's supposed guess, it's supposed yeah. to be terrible yeah i get that yeah yeah i guess yeah yeah I mean, this i don't know this looks like it's forest down the road though <laughs> It like, probably, probably is, but that's <laughs> not necessarily a bad thing, I guess. Yeah, again, I just like, let's see where it's going, I guess. Yeah. Fear my Those are sweet Alien stalker. <laughs> when you called me and you told me you wrote something new, something... Something original. I expected you to actually try. Well, to be You're fair, already. you know, to be fair, it's a little bit more original than the other ones. Like, it is a step up. Yeah, well, this film sounded... I mean, okay, so Taxi Driver ripoff, right, but it was called but it's Puppet's not overt, Lament. You know? uh, like, yeah. you know, it's not it's <laughs> not quite as obvious as the other ones. Uh, you got Mission Possibly Really Possibly. Hard in the background there. Yeah. Yeah. He's got like he's got a are... Rotten Tomatoes review on his framed on his wall. That's a nice oh, touch, I guess. It. Okay, well, your agent also thinks that the Sistine Chapel is some kind of dry martini. Mm. <sighs> that wasn't a very good joke. Uh, here's I, the thing: the, the, that there's... Could, there's there's something buried deep, deep underneath the surface. There's a there's a that in another setting in another film said in a different way with different context. That could be a funny so, joke. Yeah, I was gonna where say where the whole joke of the bar experience is that they're naming just random shit as drinks that are being made. That that's one but way to do is, it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was, it's made me think of. Uh, let's say one of you guys came up with that as a joke, and you're like, "Where can we put this in?" I'd be like, "Let's not give the audience a chance to feel the deflation." As in, um, you know, when you pause for laughter. <laughs> No, yeah, I, yeah, I find yeah. just, after and you're just, just like don't. Oh, okay. It's all. It's. Yeah. I think we've evolved as a as a fucking species at this point. Where pause for laughter is just just don't do it. So the way I would have it is like um you know someone's ripping into a character. Let's let's say a, a rushing agent or something, and he's about to get a call or someone's about to tap him on the shoulder, and he, his, the end of his sentence is like he thinks the Sistine Chapel is a dry martini. Uh, sorry, I'm gonna walk up. Like he, he says it, and there's the the plot continues, and well, so. I mean you could do it a couple of different ways, I guess. He could be like, oh, you know, my agent said, it's like, yeah, your agent said a dry, I don't know, your agent said the Sistine Chapel is a dry martini. He's like, well, actually, and then, you know, like, just, like, keep going. Like, don't, yeah, don't, don't yeah. wait for it. Because the core of the joke is silly name for a drink. Yeah. So, 
I would I for me it would be a like a running gag at a location where all of the food and the drink names are these ridiculously silly names that are just played off as being completely normal throughout the whole scene and no one yeah. joke is given time or anything it's just a, a little running sort of background thing Damn. yeah like you could you, you could imagine it in a bar where you have like a bar and he's like next order i don't know a flu will crank you will slip coming right off it's right. Like, i don't know i need a, I need a <laughs> left yeah. cow nipple or i yeah, need, and this... have a whole bunch of people coming <laughs> And it feels like it's, it's really hard for me to figure this out in terms of words, but it felt like a very generic joke with a very generic delivery. Like, I've... Yeah, well, it's not... I don't know. It's not... You know, the jokes that you pause on are, like, the really big, hard-hitting jokes. You know what I mean? That's kind of like an in-between joke. And I'm trying to you know think of, I mean? like, you'll often have... It's, uh... Say they say something... I've got a good example. Fucking Bilbo saying that the line where he says, I, I know half of half of you as well as I... What do you know? You know that whole thing? That's yeah. funny while simultaneously... The, the, the joke is great because of the fact that he just insulted a bunch of people and it tells you a lot about his character. But a lot of people don't even get it. And there's a pause because we're watching characters not get it and then Gandalf laughs. And so there's actually room for the audience <laughs> yeah. to have fun there. But also we have a purpose outside of giving the audience time to absorb and laugh. Mm -hmm. um, that feels like a first draft joke. You know what I mean? If it, if it was like one he should have come back to and rethought felt felt a little bit like uh it, it would be something i'd describe as like ooh, i just got pulled out a little bit because that felt very constructed look at the sixth sense six oscar nominations 672 million dollars worldwide okay Your right twist. so okay right i a think i think I, I think we figured it out right so he's obsessed with oscars and money right? he's a character that can't see uh making a movie without drawing from other movies. He, every movie he makes has to be, there has to be, the, every element is drawn from the, the something that worked in a different movie. There's nothing original about him. Just funny because a lot of like writing is, you know, a, pretty much all creative work is derivative to some extent. And like, again, I <laughs> don't want to be an asshole, but I'd be like, it's kind of like Chris Stuckman <laughs> as a I'm character. I don't know, maybe cheap. that's what he's going for, like, uh, copy like a self-insert to a degree. Maybe. Like, I don't think he is. Well, I, don't I don't think, think he is. either. I think what he thinks is that he recognizes that this is not the way to do it, and right, he right. tries to avoid this yeah. by being super humble. There's a video where he's talking about, you know, he's talking about, like, his, his filmmaking thing, and um, he's talking about how there's a guy who's done the composition for this and for the other one. And he's talking about, you know, if I make it, like, you're coming with me. And it's like, it's such a humble brag, you know? Like, if I make it, like, I, you know, when I make it first, I'll bring you with me, sort mm -hmm. of thing. And it's these little things. There's lots of little things, yeah. yeah. Like, like I said, it would be funny if he was like, yeah, it's supposed to be like a parody vision of me. And I'd be like, oh... <laughs> All right. <laughs> $672 million worldwide. A goddamn UFO appears and a obliterates goddamn. a sex trafficking organization and then blasts off into the fucking clouds. Fucking. Why? Don't Man, she's really angry. When did, like, yes, yeah, she's, we've, we've, we've risen another tier. She's throwing yeah, I know. some, this some is swear words in now. This is officially PG-13 now. I feel like we've missed uh, scenes. Yeah, I feel... <laughs> it feels like yeah. there's a, an extra... Yeah, there's more that should have happened in this time for this to be where we and are. And this is the thing, like... Honestly, I'd be game for this. The idea of just a producer comes to a script writer who's written some terrible shit, and they've, they're on their last straw. It's not a bad say, premise. Yeah, and, 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 premise and the conversation just gets worse and worse and worse until one, the climax would probably be, you are talentless. You mm -hmm. know, and, and the writer's just like, wow. Well, I, I just, I think of something funnier than this that's similar to this. Uh, in Arby and the Chief, there's like this sort of, there's this uh, little arc where like Master Chief wants to make a, a movie called James Bonk. Um, <laughs> so right. it's supposed to be a James Bond. And he's just totally oblivious to how to make films. So he, he's like, he's using like these little drawings of, um, of, of you know, for like establishing shots. And he's, he's doing things like, this time, chick, chick, like he's making the gun reload sound and he doesn't give a shit what, like, the Arbiter says to him. And it's just really funny because he's so oblivious and he doesn't care. And it's like, that's a really funny way of having a guy who knows nothing about making movies doing it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, maybe the bar's been set too high because I've watched too much really good content. Like, this is, it's fine so far. It, it's, not, it's not bad. It's not bad. But yeah. It's just it's like, bad. mission possibly really hard sucked. And people loved it. Get out of the way!
Now, uh, look, okay. I know that I know that it's meant to look bad, but this is the reason why I think that you should like taper down your scope. You know, if you're making a movie and you don't have that yeah. much money, it just looks bad. Even though I know that that's like what they're going for, but it looks it's I don't a, know. It, it's supposed to be bad, but it's like a different kind of bad. Like they did bad yeah. wrong. This, yes. is, this is just trope the short film, and I'm feeling like everywhere. So he's saying lines that are like echoed throughout discussions everywhere. And so is she. None of this is like Deus Ex Machina, for example, like uh, this is a this feels like it was made for the critic community, if you will, and maybe it was, whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not to mention, like, I wish so was, uh, uh, what I was going to go with was like, so let's just take a random movie, um, so Marvel movie, State. and so we have a poster in the background, and it's it's Captain Manpower, and you're like, what the fuck? And he's got like two hammers in his hands, and um, got a barbecue grill attacked attached to his back, and he's super muscly. And mm -hmm. you know that's that's the thing. And maybe he like throws meat at people, and it slaps him in the face. And he's like, so what do we do now? It's like, what is Marvel famous for? Let's have color grading that overly blends everything together, like to the point of extreme. Like all the colors are just drawn right out. You go, what else? You're like, okay, have um, a dramatic sequence happening, and then someone makes a really bad joke in the middle of it. Like someone, let's say someone's mum just dies, and then immediately after you go, well. You could always get another one, and they all laugh, yeah. you know? And then, and what I'm trying to suggest here is just, like, this really feels like you were just like, let's take a film, and then take all the parts that people say are the worst of it, and then make a short, funny thing out of it, and we'll have this guy be a character that's making those films. And I'm like, oh... I think it's just, um, it feels both out of date and shallow yeah, because these oh, are yeah. things that we've all talked about, that we all know about, and we moved on to more difficult things to hone in on you know like it's obvious that running away from explosions is bad but it's not so obvious that you know yeah, like, well, this, this kind of know, me about the extreme he's like let's have an explosion go off on him <laughs> and it's like yeah. yeah okay i get it or it's like a link thing where he is he's so many explosions behind him and he keeps running and keeps running keep and that's the joke that they just it's yeah like he can't it. stop he can't yeah, stop he's like he just breath. running to the point where he's crossing <laughs> fields and going over mountains or maybe like rivers. Uh, maybe a guy runs in you know like it's a marathon so there's a table set up with a bunch of cups of water yeah and, and he picks up like, yeah water yeah Hey, yeah. That'd be hilarious. Like he's. Like, that's what I mean. You could have taken it further, man. This oh. is off the top of my head. And, then, <laughs> and, and that's and that's if we we agree that it's a good idea to have what is essentially. I feel like the clip show element might be damaging our ability to sort of sit with these characters and because like we're feeling like it's almost jarring uh, the way that she's reacting and he's reacting and is elevating as opposed to if they were just posters and just referenced as their names and maybe plot elements. While they were just back and forth thing for twenty minutes, even you can have a twenty minute conversation. It could be very interesting. I, I don't know that these cuts to these hyper ridiculous scenes that are parodying some of the stupider elements of the film that they're going after. I'm just like, okay, all right. Yeah. I don't know. Though I would, I would hazard a guess that this was for fun. This thing, it wasn't meant to be like a serious thing at all. Like it wasn't like I could picture. We'll see though. Like let's say yeah. you made this ring and you're like, yeah, this was me kind of messing around. I just wanted to have some fun while making something. I'd be like, oh yeah, okay. You know, it's not you, did, you didn't I take mean, it. I, yeah. <laughs> but who knows? I mean, who knows what we're gonna get? Right. It says comedy slash drama. So. No one loved it. Let's agree to disagree. See, that's another like line. This is what I mean about the whole trophy thing. Agree to disagree. Yeah. Like, I'm surprised he would even reference that because surely he thinks that's a fair thing to do. But all right. What's with the rolling pin? I've never seen a rolling pin wielding vigilante before. Good. <sighs> no, not necessarily. That could be funny. So yeah, that. Yeah, I was going to say, horror comedy, it works, but drama-wise, could it work that a killer is using a rolling pin? It's like, well, you'd have to go with symbolic, probably, Well, tied to the could, character. You can do a lot of messed up things with it. Maybe he bludgeons them and then makes them... No, 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 like, I, I mean... Make some stuff so and you have to answer the a way to people to eat. You have <laughs> you to answer the question of why they would pick a rolling pin instead of any other implement that's better for beating, right? And I was going to say, you can have it be that it, there's a reason they stick with that particular item. Like, the killer has some kind of history where, you know... The family, the mother. Pins, yeah. Well, uh, maybe, I know it's, it sounds really silly, right? But you get what I mean. It's a comedy. Is there a way to do it in a dramatic sense rather than because horror comedy? I think we all agree that was, that's not hard to pull off. Oh, but drama. Let's, let's do it like let's do it like this. So his dad works on a construction site, and um, and it's really in disrepair. It's it's really it's really in a bad state, and the union doesn't have much power, and he gets killed by a steamroller. 
Um, I think that's. I don't know. Is uh, okay. Yeah, I, I was going to say veering on <laughs> funny. Uh, what about well, sim- <laughs> simple. The the dad of this family used to beat the kid, and eventually the mother tried to stop him, and he killed her by grabbing what was nearest, which was a rolling pin. Yeah, yeah. You you like it's not a fundamentally bad, which is funny coming from the subjectivity crowd. Like that, this is something that just wouldn't work ever. That's what. That's why I find it interesting. I'm like, could we make it work? Is there a storyline where you can have a killer you whose choice of work. weapon is a rolling oh, pin? Yeah. And I was going to say, like, symbolically, he may use this rolling pin because it's what was killed his mother, and you know, solidified yeah. his sense that his life was fucked from the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're not going to have a stupid ass scene where he goes, "The rolling pin had ruined my life." <laughs> but you know what I mean. Like. <laughs> I want to watch that movie now. <laughs> well, this is the thing. I would, I would personally want to watch the horror comedy, but I would give the drama yes, a chance. That's what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, they've got like, uh, is that supposed to be a reference to the Dan Aykroyd yeah. vodka back there? You got the alien, yeah. yeah, the skull, crystal skull vodka or whatever. And uh, yeah, we got we got the close up and the clip for the Mission Impossible film as well. And again, I was just like, I don't know. This is totally like a subjective thing, I guess. But like, I just really want. I like the some stuff in the background to be things I can find and isn't focused ever. If you had placed that Jurassic Universe poster between the two of them, and the frame never actually showed it until the camera's on him, and as he's explaining, let's say his greatest achievement in filming, the one that made the most money, the camera's slowly panning around, and as soon as he actually reveals, let's say enough plot for you to guess what the film is, the poster starts to come into view. I don't know if that's too obvious but it's at least dynamic uh, as a reveal something. for the poster. It's something, you know? Yeah. It could be something, yeah. Yeah. You named your villain Jerry. So? You couldn't have picked a less menacing name. That's... I... I, I what? what? If we go through a list of all the villains in cinema that are that are famous, I guess, from all kinds of different serial killers to normal people who just turn villainous, like Norman Bates. Norman... Yeah, Norman. That's, Norman, yeah. what a what? What's Hal? You know Hal. That's yeah, not a very Hal? threatening name. Hal. Uh, I mean, it's it's one of those things where you, you just go through the you start just to start thinking about it. Just start thinking well, about. What does you mean by threatening? I mean, like, yeah, Sauron is is on its face very you know foreboding, right? Yeah, the but, fantasy universe. You know, we Go live on. in the real world, and some yeah, but in the real world, Jerry. he was born, and his parents gave him a a normal name. Well, like, but one of the most historically world stomping forces that ever existed would, you know, for shorthand, called Jerry. Like, it's not something that is so ridiculous. Like, I don't know. That seems yeah, like a weird comment. <laughs> The reason that Adolf has the com- has the connotation it does is because, because a guy with a it, normal yeah. name, Adolf Hitler, is just a total normally normal but name in fairness, did terrible things. She's saying it. It doesn't mean that she's right, but the f- this film does seem to be framing it right now as the authority on what is actually normal and intelligent to a degree. Yeah, that's what the framing is. Um and and if and I guess we'll say if that's what the framing truly is, which I believe it to be, that's dumb. Well, because we're almost arguing with her character, and I don't know how much that... Yeah. <laughs> how is she supposed to be the correct... I mean, because they're clearly playing him off as a goofball who's a yeah. failure-ish. But she's supposed to be, like, the, the reasonable person here. Um, I mean, we've got Bill. Kill Bill? Bill? I wonder how Kill Jerry would have done. Oh, Norman Stansfield <laughs> from The Professional. We, we could um, easily just pull a whole bunch of, like, villain names that aren't Anton super Anton Chigger? The face. Arthur Wizard. Fleck. Hector? As an Hector Barbosa, mm, yeah. he only appears in the first two acts while Jordan is dreaming. Right, it's a metaphor. Jordan's inner demons. But he shows up for real in the end. I, I, I'm sure they'll get it when they see it, though. I mean, don't assume that your story makes sense because somebody uploads a 45-minute analysis to YouTube. Christopher, oh what? What I mean... is going on? <laughs> Oh, I mean, that, well, that, I that really felt like reaching out of the video into reality instead of. Yeah, like, that was. Who was that I mean, directed at? Well, five minute well, analysis well, would imply effort. So in I guess fa- Chris wait, wouldn't. In fairness, he's made videos where he does a deeper dive. So, like, right. th- there's a chance here that he's actually referencing his own work as a sort of like, hey, you know, I do it too, just because it's blah, 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 doesn't mean blah, blah, blah. That's almost a shot across the bow to fucking every u- video essayist, to a degree. Yeah. Um, I think he's made something like, to that degree, so I, I think he's including himself. It's just, um, it's fine. I hope so, yeah. 
Because <laughs> otherwise, no, I mean, because I agree with her. Yes, just because someone makes a forty-five yeah. minute video on your video doesn't mean it doesn't mean anything necessarily. But she's saying that in response to the idea that you can't make a metaphor for somebody being an inner demon because they become real. What is, what does that? Yeah, you could. That's not a foregone conclusion. And like, I don't, I don't agree with her judgments. At least, yeah, you so know, in time. The idea that there's a there's a guy in his dreams supposed to be a metaphor for the idea of having an inner demon, and he's an actual character by the end of the film. And this is again, yeah. we're doing this again. And this is why I like doing this in terms of like writing. How do we make that a reality in a dramatic film? And I'd be like, I think the easiest way would be that the reveal is you could have. A bit of fucked up memory or they saw a picture of this person a long time ago and it's made into their subconscious or maybe like you perceive them in your mind in, in a certain way so you start treating them badly and then they start to actually dislike you and in if the we real have, light in, in the real you if know? we have access to um sci-fi there's a lot of ways to make this work oh yeah, yeah. i mean do you guys ever watch the sphere no mm -mm. it's a uh, really good we should watch it sometime it, it's like i think it's like a 90s movie but it's like someone goes into a sphere and then the stuff that they imagine starts kind of the things in their head kind of start to manifest in reality based on what they're kind of thinking to a degree but yeah we're almost we've almost crafted what could be a pretty cool premise people you see in your dreams can be manifested and they all represent inner demons inner struggles oh yeah i mean that's um i want to say that there was a like an scp story like that where they have to keep someone like permanently sedated because they have the ability when they dream of things or when they think about stuff like it causes real things similar to happen in the actual world. So they have to keep them whatever. Oh, my God. There's an episode of Buffy that exactly. Uh, sorry, Angel, that does this. I just fucking realized ah. uh, to remain nice and vague. Oh. <laughs> episode opens with the character uh, looking into a mirror. And then we start to notice that the, the character in the mirror is moving differently and he starts talking to him and it's basically his self-conscious ripping into him. And he like slams the mirror because he's pissed off and it's gone, which is like, okay. The further you go into the story, the more you realize he's a demon, by the way, this character. And uh, something's been done to him that uh, allows him to manifest inner conflicts that he doesn't deal with as corporeal elements that can actually do damage. It happens by the end of the episode. It's magic-based. I just can't believe I didn't think of this. That's, like, like, literally the premise. And it's a part of what's considered the best season of uh, Angel, so... <laughs> There's not many I set of premises yeah. that you can't make a story out of. There's the, as well, much I think, as I think, uh, isn't that the, like the way that it works? The premise is not the problem; it's the execution. execution. Like, there's yeah. nothing wrong with the idea necessarily. Well, you got this guilty. Like, you can't have a villain called Jerry. Uh, we just said you're like challenge accepted. Yeah, the, I guess this is. I don't know. This is fascinating coming from the subjectivity sort of you know sphere to say these things. Right, because it's isn't, very it's, broad. Isn't this great. This is hilarious. It's like, oh, EFAP, you know, they don't let anybody like anything whilst also saying that any premise could work. <laughs> and <laughs> but again, could, we're not um, we're not ascribing work. these comments to Chris Stuckman. It's clearly this no. character. I don't know that he agrees with this or not. Maybe he agrees with neither of them. He thinks that maybe these are supposed to be representations of the, the terrible film critic and the terrible filmmaker. Yeah, uh, maybe. Inception, nominated for eight Oscars, won for 828 okay, million. Okay, Nolan perfected that script over a period of 10 perfected. years. Perfected that script. Perfected. Okay, right. whoa. Right. Inception, <laughs> like, the easy criticism it has is fucking characters are all bland as shit outside of, like, Leonardo DiCaprio and his wife. They all, like, fall into the same thing. You mostly forget get why the other people in Inception are even there. You know, like, the whole dream team? You're like, what do you even yeah. do? Yeah. <laughs> like, I completely forgot. Tom Perfect Hardy makes up the, you know, grenade launches. <laughs> perfected over does. ten years? Is that true? He worked on it for ten years, but that doesn't mean he perfected it. I mean, I like that movie, but... Well, I was gonna know, say, like, I like Inception too, but, um, alright. <laughs> and also, like, I mean, what's the implication there? Is something that somebody worked on for 10 years necessarily better than something that somebody worked on for one year mm. or like six months? No, the only response is not necessarily, no. <laughs> yeah. I thought that you didn't want to write movies like this anymore, but I can't. How did you read his script and conclude that? Yeah. Also, the by the <laughs> there's like, what, five movies that he's made like this so far? We don't even know about the poster behind her yet. I don't understand so. her character. <laughs> Just, yeah, well, why yeah. are you here? What did you think would be different after the fifth, sixth attempt of the same that's, thing? See, that's a valid point, but she's also read this new one, and she's like, I thought you were going to change. It's like, why would you assume that? <laughs> yeah, why would you think that? Yeah. What, what did he say? you don't like the script. You don't like it. She hates it. <laughs> yeah. 
This complete lack of perception is exactly why I broke up with you in the first place. Oh, ah, broke up with there you. Okay. She's literally just know, here to offer like, her opinion on his films, I guess? Maybe she works in the industry, but she just doesn't work with him, which would make sense. Okay. That was, um... Maybe. Yeah. Also, felt like a little bit of a clunky segue. You have no perception that that's why we broke up. You're like, oh. Oh. All right. All right. That's <laughs> <laughs> all right. It's not like you've never won anything before. Sorry, what was the line of dialogue before showing this? It's not like you've never won anything before. Yeah, and then they played this straight away. And so now Action Person and Discount Kylo Ren are on a construction site. Why is it also over the top? <laughs> We've been noticing and commenting all the things in the background that I find kind of neat or whatever, and then they get shown, and I'm like, all right. I mean, at least yeah, this okay. frame I couldn't quite see, but that is a pretty blatant framing for the, for the vodka alien and the shots, you know? It's like, look at them too, mm. by the way. It's like, okay. He knows what people will instantly think of when they see it. It's almost everything like, in this uh, room. Like this is a set for a movie. Yes. So they put everything. They put everything here. This was all arbitrary. They all decided to put all this stuff here. It doesn't feel like an organically, you know, furnished. I was going to say that earlier, place. but I didn't. Like this is almost like a like robots or, or like aliens have kidnapped somebody and they're trying to trick them into thinking this is a real habitation, and so they oh. arrange a room in a certain way. Everything was meticulously placed to represent ideas of what this thing is supposed to be, and something got lost in translation. I'm just not feeling like myself lately. Tone! Okay. You're making good money. You know, you he's so he's successful! Sorry, just the way that that conversation went, right? So you have... Let's take quality out of the equation for a second and just focus on originality. This is exactly why you're writing these these shitty knockoffs you've been writing for the past six years. I mean, this complete lack of perception is exactly why I broke up with you in the first place. I did really try with this one, Melanie. You've made a name for yourself. I, you've got your shit together. It's not like you've never won anything before. I'm just not feeling like myself lately, Mel. You're making good money. These shitty knockoffs you've been writing for the past six years. You're making good money. Not feeling like myself lately. Tone. Mel. It's not that. Then why ask for my notes? When I moved here, after college, I didn't care if people liked them. I, I, I didn't care if, if they did well. I just wanted to make them. Yeah. This is a dramatic like speech, right? The camera's sort of just staying here. It moves enough to know that you know someone's holding it, but it's not like uh, it you would- like it's without purpose. Yeah. yeah, it's almost like if I was going to hold a camera to deliberately show movement, it would be like maybe outside, it's windy, there's motion going on, and the camera maybe reflects that in some way, or there's tension in the air, and so the motion of the camera kind of shows that, like it could break at any second. This is really hard for me to actually try and explain, because I don't think I've actually made this criticism about anything before. It's very rare that I will tell you, I don't like how long this shot is lasting. <laughs> like, this yeah, like, is not something I use. I fucking love long shots. So the, I think it's because I feel like I'm in the room and I'm awkwardly staring at him. Do you ever have this in like conversations where you're like, I, I've been staring at this one thing for a while, I should probably look at something else now. If you're waiting for something. Yeah. And you could do it with, a yeah. say a person sitting across from you looking at a magazine, you look at them for a bit and then you're like, right, I can only look at the for about another five seconds before I have to move. Otherwise, if they see me. It's almost like if you notice that a lot of the times you notice things are one shots after the fact. Yes. Right, right. Yes, exactly. You're you not like, wow, this shot attention. is going on for a long time. I think, when is I it think gonna that's change? Thing, right? You don't want to draw yeah. people's attention to the cut, whether it's too short or too long. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you don't want people to be thinking about the edits. Well, yeah, um, like in um the Hill House episode, I gotta I need to yeah, finish by yeah. the way. But in the yeah, the, with the <laughs> funeral, 
that shot was like 16 minutes or some bullshit. Yeah. And yeah. you didn't even oh really, God. you just like you noticed it in the back of your mind because it was impressive. Not because it was taking something away from the scene. Stuff was happening. Characters were changing. Stop it. You're going to give me There's an orgasm thinking acting. about that fucking you know, one it's shot. Just, it's so good. Oh my God. One a one shot isn't good just because it's a one shot. It's what you can achieve in your one shot. Yeah, and, and it's not just the, the yeah. Shot. You, it's not just like say for example, it's like my one shot is pretty much determined by how good this actor is going to pull this off. It's like no, no, no. You need to be doing work too, Mister Cameraman. And I'm not saying there's not work being done. It's more Why I feel like the work... camera doesn't know what to do right now, other than he's here and he's saying things. I'm here. Yeah, point at man talking. The, the thing, camera's really wobbly. Yeah, it's, not only is it wobbly, but there's another thing I think, and it's the the movies calling it a movie, a uh, short film, whatever you want. Um, up to this point, whoever's been the speaker, the camera will draw its attention to them that's the first time i think that we've had a shot where the entire sentence thing that's delivered was off screen and so it can be like a oh the camera didn't it move but i'm not saying that that's something you cannot do uh there's plenty of times where you can show someone's face before during and after someone else making a statement it can tell you a lot about what they're feeling um and i yeah. think that's what he was gunning for with this it's just that like i said it, i, I uh, wasn't prepared for that so it felt a bit weird I think anybody who's a stuck with Val would be like, you've ruined the movie by pausing it too much. And I'd be like, so the whole premise behind fucking pausing is that you've had a thought and there's not enough time to share it before you're going to have another one. And then there's new information to absorb as well. That's why I typically draw it back because in the moment that I choose to pause and hit pause, there's about two seconds where I haven't absorbed anything from what's been mm -hmm. shown. And so I want to make sure I catch it all. I'm practically delivering the premise of every frame of pause not being something that should be looked at as ruining content. By pausing it we'll have to do this with something we consider to be great one day or something like that because this is the this is the first of its kind honestly we're practically live reviewing a film yeah some people feel like they watch it once they have their thoughts and that's it like there's no need for anything else i still feel this is competent enough meanwhile i'm cashing in checks for my voyeuristic dog sex franchise <laughs> I feel like a little totally fucked here. Like, yeah, we just entered into um, the climax speech. What feels like, you know? Yeah, we're we're about at the halfway point. In uh, I don't know. This is a lot to coax out of somebody in nine minutes. I feel like it would take you longer. Than oh nine yeah, this is to this get is somebody to say this. Not just I don't think I, I wouldn't describe this as rushed. It feels like several conversations took place, and you cut them all up into pieces, and then drew one conversation from different pieces of all these different conversations. Yeah. Um. This doesn't feel like real yeah. people talking. I mean, some of the lines oh, feel no. real enough, but they're just in the wrong places. Like some of these, some of these responses, I'm like, what? Like, we 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 noticed this from the get go with her like getting angry really fast and then throwing in loads of swear words. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, okay. I, I didn't know that's what we were dealing with. He's got really small ears. Oh, thanks for pointing that out. No, <laughs> no, no, I'm not gonna. No. <laughs> the part where they asked how you got your start, you didn't even mention Werewolf Woods. Our first script we wrote together. You're embarrassed by me. Joe, that's Have you seen that's the movie? Not... I mean, I thought she'd made that clear already. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> yeah, she said, she told, she yelled at you that you made shitty fucking movies. I don't know. And she like, literally said nobody liked uh, Mission Possibly Hard or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I. What's what's the surprise here? It's a she new revelation terrible. that she doesn't like his movies. I guess, yeah. yeah. He makes bad movies that are successful financially. He's not like a failure in that yeah, sense. Yeah, successful financially, failure. and yet no one likes them. And the whole comment about the best, like, I'm talking about like the, the spirit of the comment, because even in Hot Fuzz, they have Shaun of the Dead in a bargain bin. And Shaun of the Dead's amazing, so anything can end up in a bargain bin. However, she's saying, your movies are so shit, they b like belong or end up there, and no one likes them. It's like, clearly that's not true. Like, even I would be like, right. if someone said Michael Bay couldn't please an audience, I'd be like, um... It's like, well, sure obviously can. that's not true, yeah. yeah you sure can. And that's I'm more of a sure condemnation of the... of the audience instead of Michael Bay. <laughs> <laughs> sure, yeah. Um, and this is the thing. Like, I, uh, this is a part of her I'm confused about. I mean, fuck you. You know, like if you had a friend who was making movies regularly and successfully, and he said he'd happily work on scripts with you, that's your like, that's your in to be like, I can maybe improve them. You're yeah. getting, you're getting them made. I could maybe, and it'll, it'll give me um, a bit more clout in terms of recognition as a screenwriter, and I actually get to fucking test screenwriting so you know i don't know no it really seems like a good setup you. but because yeah. what i'm getting here is like he's he's this failed filmmaker who has all these embarrassing films that made enough money to let's just say break even or, or pay the rent 
but um, sounds like they yeah, did they did better than that. that. It sounds yeah, yeah it sounds yeah, exactly. and you know you heard him. He like he made like three sequels to the 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 animals filming people having sex thing. So they must have had a decent amount of success, right? I don't know. I'm very confused by these Over, characters. Yeah, obviously I'm aware of like shitty films that get sequels, but I'm yeah I don't really understand the state of affairs for him and and for her really. What's my legacy? You know, what will I be remembered for? Will I be remembered? I want to make a movie that people watch over a fine glass of wine. Uh, who is this person? What happened to the person that we got at the beginning? What happened to the person 10 minutes ago? I just yeah, feel like this is like a... too quick. Yeah, like I feel like this is just a different character entirely. Well, well the thing is, it feels like we've jumped from you know, st the, the stage one who's like, nah, everything I'm making's good. Everything I'm making's good. He was, he was it, arguing. Know, yeah, he was arguing heavily for his yeah. stuff. And now he's like... Yeah. And, you know, and people loved it! The way that he argued for his film was very very movie Bob esque super deep metatextual fucking nonsense in a lot of ways. It's, it's, it's a visual story. But then he has all of these just ridiculous films that are supposed to be ridiculous. Like, how does... I don't know how that's supposed to work together. Like, I guess he's now silly. trying, uh, yeah, he's trying maybe, now to make something that's serious. Maybe the rolling pin film is his attempt at doing something great as opposed to the rest, which are all terrible. Maybe, but it seems like it slots in exactly with the rest. Well, yeah, it's, a, this is what ways. I mean. It's a, it's a ripoff like of Taxi Driver that looks like it's going to be really stupid. I want to make a film that people watch in theaters, not on the toilet. He watches films on the toilet. I want people to watch them in theaters, not on the toilet. But instead he said, in theaters, not on the toilet. Yeah, odd inflection of the line. I want to make a film that people watch in theaters, not on the toilet. He's almost Chris, there. Chris should have asked him to do it again. This <laughs> is what should have happened if that's what yeah. he was going for. The gap is too too small, so it sounds like in theaters, not on the toilet. It's fine. Yeah. 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 Uh, he says something like, this is going to be my masterpiece. And then she's like, oh, like, uh, you know, Jurassic Universe. And then it shows us the clip of it. And then he goes, that was that I, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah he I, tries to explain the metatextual Well, no, no, I'm nature. saying he's trying to be like, that was a fuck up. Yes, that, I failed on that one. But this one's great. And then she goes, uh, he says like an amazing theme. She's like, oh, like mission super hard. And then, he, and then he's like, look, I made some mistakes. Sure. But, like, he's he's basically acknowledging that this is the movie that's a masterpiece and it's different from all those other failures. Because that's what he's doing right now. He wasn't doing that earlier. Well, he kind of feels like a different character sense. now. <laughs> Just a little bit. And the who killed his wife mystery box is fun, but it's nothing we haven't seen before. Not good criticism. Yeah, no. Just because you've seen something before doesn't good. make it, you shouldn't have it. Oh, uh, what, a murder? In a movie? Yeah, we've seen that before. And also, drop the alien thing. It's like, what the... Heads. <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah, know. If you don't, if you tell him what to change, but not why, yes, how is he supposed that's, to improve? That's the issue, I think. Yeah. Also, by the way, mystery box, another key like uh, phrase for the critic crowd. I only hear it from J.J. Abrams and Electronic Arts. I'm not even sure that I hear this from like I don't I wouldn't expect necessarily to hear this from like a screenwriter necessarily. I guess if they were a big fan of J.J., <laughs> maybe. He looks at the screen and says, First by Parliament, live and punish." No. Or, or, or what if what if he challenges Jerry to to an arm wrestling contest to, to, to win back his honor? Okay, a second ago he was somber and accepting mm. without question her criticism. Yeah, like, now now just, it seems boom. like he has some sort of personality disorder. Yeah, at even, this seems, point. Like, even the character of the the, the direction has changed. The it's like dun 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 dun. That's what I feel like I'm in now. Yeah. yeah. And he's gonna—he's just gonna start spitting takes that are all insane. And yeah, like this is why your relationship didn't work out because you're <laughs> fucking weird. Like you're all over the place. Yeah, I feel like this is like, our third character from him now. Yeah, he's—he's he's sort of back to the first guy. Yeah, it's like if you could draw a spectrum of the crazy filmmaker who's an idiot, uh, zero to ten. We had him at zero a second ago, and now he's at a full ten. And like up till the zero and the ten, he was he was like a five. Should make an autobiography. Like at this point, that'd be way more interesting than the movies he's making. Oh, Just yeah. an insight into this man's mind. <laughs> God damn it! You're right. I, I'm fucking talentless. I'm pathetic. I even had a good idea since Zombie Blood Snatchers. What's the scene? Are we going back now? Yeah. Which character are we now? 
Oh, you, you can hear even the violin part playing now. Yeah, I was gonna say like, this is so. This is your changed. this is your standard. I've realized something. Music. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember how we did it? Yeah, we flipped the main characters and changed the story. It fixed everything. All right. So Werewolf Woods was like an act. I guess that was an actual hit. Was like it, it's unironically she, a good movie. But she's just implied that it, the film worked, but she's still ashamed of it. You can't have both! When he pushed stuff off his table, he said, I haven't made anything good since, and he said something like zombie something something. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm getting a lot of mixed signals from you, sir. So you believe that uh, the Woods one is good, this, this zombie one is good, but also that this, this rolling pin one is your first good one. Huh? Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What? Damn it! I've what? got Damn it. Our hero is really the villain. That's actually... Not bad. How come you accept that idea, but the other one's yeah, just on their face? I'm very like curious works. to know how that fixes the story. Is that well, how it works? You just change one thing and it's all good. You know <laughs> what? This is funny about this. It's not really applicable to what you've just said, but if we had Batwoman and we made it so she was a villain, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this could Batman work. Comes back and has to take it down. I'm not trying to take a shot at female protagonists here, but again, Ray and Captain Marvel. If they were both villains, <laughs> our stories could be a hell of a lot more interesting with what we're getting out of them. You know, like, this wouldn't work for, like, Rogue One, making Jin a villain. Like, why? That well, doesn't, I don't see. No. The three of us, we're applying the same thing to what she said here to all the other stuff, which is the premise isn't terrible at all. It's the execution. Right? Yeah, you, the, the like, movie is the fact that... Like, you... This one is different from all of the other things. And for reasons uh, this that is a, not explained. This is such a weird, like, method, I guess. You know, the idea of, what if we just change this one thing around? All I'd say is, like, that could be something. I don't know. It just depends. Well, like, yeah, what's well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think what if we do irrelevant... something that completely changes the framing of the entire film? Right, the because... the hero is the villain. When you're like, talking oh, strictly okay. about premises, what if Superman was evil? It's like, Cool premise, yeah, like, but you're gonna have to do good. more than yeah. that when you make the fucking story. Like you can't just say, "What mm -hmm. if Superman's here?" But uh, vice versa, if you have a fully plotted out script and then you go, "Let's flip a hero and a villain," I'd be like, like literally with Batwoman, for example. You need a flip, lot of work. I guess they're just talking about like, hey, they're thinking in their head about all the different things they can change, maybe. Like John is, and and we can tell he's like like an enforcer type guy. And not a fan of the soundtrack. Yeah. Boo, 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 boo. Like John is, and and we can tell. Like, I don't this is need supposed it. to be I don't, like the I don't good know revelation. Like this is this is great. This is a good film. This is different from the others for reasons that we won't explain. I was about to say. Yeah, I think I this would have worked it. better with zero soundtrack. Actually, I don't think you need. It's it's all dialogue. So not the dialogue doesn't need soundtrack. Uh, you're not you're not looking not at establishing thing, shots or. Um, a lot, a lot of things that without music feel fucking awkward is what I'm getting at. The emotion of the actors could, should probably be able to carry the scenes into what we're feeling. I say that knowing full well that I've been, I've been dragged left and right with this thing. What about a son? I mean, it's overused, but not necessarily a bad idea. Think bad how idea. is a son or what? That's her input. That's been done. And she's great. Okay. She seems to That's be, so she's done. on the opposite end of the spectrum. So on one side you have the guy who rips off everything. And then on the other you have... We can't have humans, that's been done. <laughs> like, well, I, I, yeah. it's such a weird way. Imagine somebody saying character arcs have been done. You know, you wanna you you don't wanna do that. <laughs> okay. Leon, 1990. Stop doing that. I agree with her. Please stop doing that. Not yeah. speak without referencing a film. Maybe they're supposed to represent what's wrong with filmmakers and critics or something. But I don't I don't know yet about her. It's all references yeah, it's and callbacks confused. to other things. Nothing can be on its own. Just, just bear with me. I, I, I haven't felt a spark like this in years. Years? I thought these are all films that you wanted to make and you thought were good. What about earlier when he was doing those pitches and she was like, no, that's terrible. I guess that's different. He was lying to himself. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Also, yeah. you shouldn't say that. I don't know. I would prefer it if he didn't say that overtly. You know, like, you don't... Yeah. Everybody's declaring what they mean, like in overt terms, and it's kind of, I don't know. People don't always say what they mean for starters, and secondly, they seem to contradict other things that have been said before. I just, uh, I don't, I can't make heads or tails of this character. He's, um... Well, here, let's just, it's really, really simple, uh, when you, when you look at it like a base way. Like, the, after all of that we've heard so far about this guy, let's ask ourselves, does he hate what he does, or does he love what he does? My take was he likes what he does, but he wants to be remembered for something good. 
He seems to so be he like, knows that his stuff's he knows bad. That what he makes is bad, and he wants to make he, something that is. But good. he's yeah. constantly defending it. Well, yeah, yeah. No, I you're right. Yeah. Um, he he knows they're bad. He wants to make something good, but he also would argue that there's something of value in them despite being bad. That's the best I can that, give that, him. That, that, that's I. That's that's still leaving me with issues though, because if he recognizes that what he makes isn't good and that there needs to be a change, why would he? defend what he's made before when he knows that he's not happy with it. This is part of the problem is so many variables with like how do these characters gauge quality? People liking it, him making money, them being critically claimed, them being scripts that they consider to be good, like both of them or one of them. He said that he's got three ra three films that he's referenced in some way, shape or form that we're good and they're all, funnily enough, ones at the beginning, ones in the middle and ones coming up now. It's a broken prop from Captain Bolsada. See? <laughs> it wasn't the only thing that didn't work on that movie. Here, get up. Come on, we're gonna we're gonna act it out. So reach, reach yeah. uh, Why would she agree to this? Happening? What's happening? And also she seems to be like in the attitude now of someone who's almost um a hostage. Yeah. Yeah, even of. though even though she knows it's a fake gun. Like and he's just I don't know. And also just the idea of taking out a a, a gun broken prop or not and pointing it at your head and pulling the trigger it makes <laughs> yeah. me oh god fuck no no just no, I, oh no uh i did what was necessary that bitch deserved to die and how could you take something so pre music mm. yeah, Grind, it's grinding this? my gears a little bit there yeah just to just want to play i don't that. need it i don't really need it like that's that's the thing just to play that bit again I did what was necessary that bitch deserved to die i'm not even sure it matches it doesn't because they're supposed, you, you would think that the, I would have the music be like the opposite. Like it's supposed to portray what would be in the film at that moment that they're acting out. Yeah, that could work. I think I would go with it, no soundtrack personally. I think, uh, I think two choices here are either no, no music at all, or maybe you do it kind of, you know, like when you watch Looney Tunes and it's very dynamic, like it's changing all the time to yep. suit exactly what's happening on screen. So yeah, like, of course, dun, 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 Well, dun. well the thing is, is that um, sort of thing. The, the, issue, the issue there is that with Looney Tunes, the music was composed specifically to match, like, frame by frame to what was happening. So it was like, they would have composed a whole thing to come... Like, it's, it's not really feasible for this, but you, again, you, you don't need music for the whole thing. You could do... I don't know. I, just don't do the music. Like, that's, that's the main thing. This feels like gotta do it. one of those... But there's got to be music. You know what I mean? Even though that's a very odd view to have of any, you know, movie that doesn't Well, I mean, like some, of, some of the most impactful stuff uh, people often agree on is when, like, cutting out the music. Like, yeah, really, of... really impactful moments can thud so much harder when there's no soundtrack. The Kamikaze in TLJ, I believe there's no music for that. I think that moment is yeah. effective, visually impactful. I just think it's dumb, writing-wise. It's just dumb. You but then you have the, the same. Think of all the Tarantino s scenes where people are yeah. talking and you know shit might happen at any moment and there's no music happening. Well, I, I think um... the issue is that uh, music can prime expectations. So yeah. you need to right. think about where you And you really want people to not notice it, to be affected by it, but to not to the point where they go, hey, hey, what are you doing? You're pushing me to an emotion. Stop it. I need to get well, there myself. I guess I think the scene with uh, when it's Luke versus Darth Vader, you know, when they're fighting, it's like the best lightsaber fight in the whole series. And I think that one's made a oh, lot better with the music. Oh, soundtrack is fucking fantastic. Yeah, yeah that whole bit is just it's, great. It's, Duel of the Fates. It's, uh, it's, what? Uh, no, that was, no, no, no. no, that was, I'm talking about, uh, episode six. I know, it's just another example. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, Jewel of the that Fates. That song but, almost oh, saves yeah, us in... There's a good example, because Jewel of the Fates plays, it's really good, but then it cuts out when it's Qui-Gon versus, uh, Darth Maul. There's no music. True, it's just true. Totally it's a lot insane. more intimate and close Excellent together. Excellent example. And, <laughs> yeah. And also, well, man, like, what, the other day, the throne room <laughs> scene without John Williams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I was going to reference, by the way, because, again, in terms of options, right, let's say you've got high action soundtrack, people getting chased, and then you have a guy jumps over a thing, he sees the guy who's chasing him has fallen over or something, he's free and clear, but then there's another character we're aware of who catches up to him and shoots him, and so, like, he crosses over, sees them, shot, does the soundtrack turn loud and dramatic and sad, or cuts out the second he's shot. These are like two different significant choices you can make, and I, I think you notice in post which one works better, but I almost always love the cut of the soundtrack. It's just yeah, like... Yeah, I think, I think uh, Breaking Bad does it a lot. Remember the scene where Jesse's gonna go up to the drug dealers, and then the car just comes out, and Walt drives, runs them down, the music cuts out completely? Mm-hmm. 
Breaking Bad's a great example. Like if you ever want to look at how to use music in a in a great way, Breaking Bad's probably the the good example. And yeah, uh, this I'd say John Wick does it really well. The pulsing dance music really goes well with the lights and the you know the action and stuff's happening and it. Yeah, a lot of the yeah, shots well, line up uh, with the beats. Yeah. Yes, it's um. There's a certain rhythm to music and action scenes in particular that can work. But even in John Wick, there are parts where the music cut out. I think naturally, less input means we focus highly on the input we have, which is gunshots, men like screaming or going ah, uh, all the sounds mm -hmm. of moving around, rolling, and it's just it makes it can make it can make for a more immersive experience. While in this moment, I'm confused exactly how I should feel for her and for him and what this is going to amount to. And the music is like a person next to me saying, this is good. And I'm like, I is it? Is it? Why? <laughs> I think Explain the idea is he's inspired. Stranger. Yeah. Oh, you sick son of a bitch. And then yeah, you say the killer's lines. Right, right. Remember, we're switching the roles. And how could you take something so precious from this precious world? Well, I mean, maybe change the adjectives there a, a little bit. This is exactly why you're writing these these shitty knockoffs you've been writing for the past six years. I mean, there's not enough water in the world to wash away the blood on my hands. It's an odd thing Did to you say. find that hypocritical? It seems like the wrong time to get into a philosophical tire. That's what the point of his initial piece of dialogue was. How many people have you yeah, killed? This is the, so the time for the ethical debate oftentimes in climaxes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What the- what a weird criticism. I just- like, this, mean, this is weird. <laughs> Jordan approaches and, and and presses his gun against his temple. Why didn't he do something about that? Yes. Why would this be the way that you would hold a gun to a person? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is really strange. You are very, very at risk to being disarmed. Like, you better fucking have your finger on the trigger. I mean, a, a, a trained assassin or a gunman would never press his gun up to someone like that? Like, it's a ranged no. weapon? You would don't go don't be within arm's reach of somebody. Like, as as That's the whole point. The trigger, the gun's gonna fly right out and, of her hand. And, and then you might be like, like well, don't you see? He wrote this, so it's terrible. And it's like, I, I, I'm just like, I this is what I find it fix though. I mean, it's a much better one take than the other one. Do you want me to keep reading? What are they doing? What is this? Are they like regaining are their they, spark? Like, are their yeah, pants think, still I on? So. I, I, like, is that going to be the point of this? Is that the relationship is rekindled thanks to this conversation? Was that so? Like, these characters are really like tensed, and it's like they've just fucking orgasmed. <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying actual... this, but like, this content doesn't work for a short film. We need an hour at least. Yeah, and what we're, what they're actually doing doesn't match at all what they should be feeling. If anything, she should be like, "You're being a fucking weird person again." Wait, she seems downright aroused. It's yeah, weird. <laughs> This is really awkward. Didn't he just like... like yeah, so all that happened, watching. right? This is funny because you brought up the whole if you had a success with your first film, wouldn't you want to try and apply what worked about it with future ones? And the, the literal thing was flipping. That's it? And apparently he's thanking her for this. It was like... You didn't really do anything. <laughs> you, you established. You came up with the idea. Yeah, you established like, to her that idea. we wrote on this film but we flipped it and we should do it with this. <laughs> and she's just been like agreeing with you this whole time. I guess the fact that she was here f facilitated that? I, I, all right. All right. <laughs> For a second there, I felt like we were back at that park in college. Did you fuck in that park? I missed this. Missed what? <laughs> missed what? Yeah. What a shot. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, oh, I think we're too close. Way too close. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> Every Why time it gets back this? to him, it makes me. <laughs> it's almost like they're not people up this up close like this. With a hint of redemption for him. Oh, I get it, because that's what. Yeah, this I was gonna is. say it applies to him. I don't okay. know if I'd say it was like bad. I don't I mean, know. Like I would say it's bad. I mean, how much did we talk about the inconsistent tone and how he seems to be different characters at different times and how there's just. How her uh, behavior yeah, is strange. I guess. No I guess. For anything. Okay. Um, um, I that had to be a first draft like that because there was a lot that I think you know like to me that that reads like something you would come up with the first time and then you'd look back at it and then you try and like get the connected tissue. You know what I mean? Like you, I, you'd be like, all right, I want to get him from here to here, but I need to like change this. I need to. I don't know. He needs to draw that right out. You gotta earn all of those changes in emotion and attitude, cause uh, way too quick. Yeah. yeah. 
I don't know if a 20 minute film, 18, uh, 19 minute film, maybe not the best medium to show. You could have done a whole movie on that. You could have done a whole movie for that, honestly. Like, yeah. you could have done a whole movie. Yeah. You could go for an hour and 30 minutes for that. I think any longer might be a bit tricky, but like that, there's a lot that you could have pulled from that because you could have, you could, they, it, it, <laughs> It feels so, like we skipped a lot in between. Well, the the thing is, is um, I I gotta imagine that he ran this past people like the script, but I guess the issue was that um, I feel like I don't know, I I feel like he doesn't have people who will scathingly criticize his stuff. Probably not. We're probably um, gonna be the most scathing there is outside of people who just hate him. People will ask. People will just be like, "Why didn't you like it? It's just a twenty minute Chris Duckman movie." He's like, "Well, it's kind of garbage." Well, I think part of the issue that people have coming into it, they'll be like, oh, well, it was the first attempt. It's like, yeah, but that, what if I didn't know this? What if I didn't know who Chris Stuckman was and this was the first thing I saw? Like, it doesn't, well, like, like it doesn't I said, matter. Well, like I said, if you showed you it know, to someone as an episode of a TV show, um, I think they could believe that it was an episode of a TV show, but uh, they might, yeah. like, hmm. And I was going to say, in terms of, like, these three credits specifically, right? So we'll st if we start with the production, so just the, the set, costumes, and uh, elements that, let's say, uh, special effects and... Um, soundtrack and all that it was, it was like I, I i guess i give it like a solid five for that yeah like it's it's it was basically fine. right in the middle yeah uh direction again probably a solid five i'd probably go four because there were a few shots where we were like that was too long or does that get counteracted the by the the one shot that was all right toward the end i don't know because that one shot was okay you know it was fine so I, let's I, say this, I, don't know. I don't know four or five then and yeah. then the writing is and we tend to advocate that writing is the most important and I'm, we're looking at I guess, three two or three yeah, yeah. i mean I, I guess the thing is we moved past the comedy thing i think we got way past that eventually and we well i mean funnily like, enough in reference to the beginning doing. like the, we're, we're pulling full zeros on uh reactions in terms of like was i ever made to laugh or feel it's like not really let's uh look at our little tally here uh for chuckles we had a uh, Mahler said three zero Frank and myself said two it was a I think it was a zero across the board yeah for laughs it was zeros across the board definitely didn't even make me didn't even make me smile honestly we was have too confused touching, to be laughing yeah the touching scenes uh being moved uh, it is a comedy drama uh, Mahler said he 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 would have a m a moment with one, and Fringy and I said zero, and I think it was zeros across the board. Mm -hmm. I mean, all I felt was confused. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> confusion is, yeah, definitely confusion. I was too busy noticing it was inconsistent. These didn't feel like real people talking in an actual conversation that might be had with anyone. It felt very artificial. At the same time, referencing his terrible movies, which... Yeah, I, I really think that some of these cutaways, like with the heart punch thing, really were just... Oh, there go. Oh, we're back. To, oh, now we're to where we were before. Yeah, they felt awkward. It's almost like we need to have special effects for the sake of special effects, even at our level. I think there would have been way better ways to pull that off. Nothing stands out. At, at best, the movie is not noteworthy. I guess the thing is, right, when it comes to, you know, amateur f filmmaking or whatever, and I don't mean that in like a derogatory, I mean just like somebody starting off or, um, yeah. you know, somebody who's working on a low budget. Like, even if the production values aren't there, you know, if they're a good writer, that's going to come through no matter what. Like, the good writing will always sort of prevail, which is why yeah, writing is yeah, first and foremost. You often get the whole, like, um, oh, yeah, it wasn't too great, but the dialogue was good, or the will building was good, or the... Um... Yeah, or, or you can have things like, um, maybe the acting wasn't so great, but the dialogue, I think, was fine, or the dialogue was good, or I liked the, uh, the idea, or something. Or, like, you know, it was filmed on a pretty crappy camera, but, you know, it was actually pretty good. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. Here, it's like, the sets are fine. The cameras are fine. It all looks clear. It's all well lit and all that. Um, but like something wrong with the, the actual story itself, and that's the most important part. Well, so what do you, what do you guys reckon about the comment of um, you guys haven't made one of these? Well, I haven't. I haven't made you're right. A short I would film, never. No. I would never make something like this. Well, I was, I was going to say it's an inevitable comment. You may as well respond to oh, ahead yeah. of time. Well, you haven't made a movie. 
It was like, okay, so you have now invalidated all of Chris Tuckman's review b- reviews before he made a movie. Good job. Well, I it's, guess the whole idea is it's like, well, he's trying, and it's like, yeah, he is, and that's oh, fine. And in that regard, yeah, keep um, going. Just yeah, keep, yeah, keep going. Stop. Yeah, he might as well. Don't he stop. might as well. Go for like, it. You know. Learn from this. Make something something's that's good. Because the thing is, you know, if 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 somebody watched a, a, a review of their own movie and all they did was sort of scoff and go like, oh, that was over the top. It's like, ah. Uh, <laughs> no, stop. Well, is the thing. Listen, uh, you know? I, th- I think a lot of people might watch this and be like, wow, assholes. But I'd be like, I feel like we did everything we could to get as detailed as we could about all the different things that could have been done as opposed to what was done and why we, what we were trying to suggest would be seen as better or worse. Yeah, advice is good or bad regardless of where it comes from. And I mean, do you think that literally every time a director wants to get feedback he can only get it from other directors obviously that's not how it works like Um, i don't have to be a chef to know that what i just ate tasted terrible yeah um i think that this is the thing it's gonna get made anyway but yeah i I guess that's that's about it anything else so yeah Nah, uh, uh, try harder. I don't know. Uh, no, like, um, I don't know. All right, then. Yeah, that's it. 